Join us in the fight to restore liberty and American exceptionalism. Together, let's make the case that our charters of freedom are worth defending and honoring. Right here is where the great American experiment comes alive. Let's get to work. Just recently, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas said that the chief job of Congress should be to draft executive orders for the president to sign instead of Congress actually passing the laws themselves as required by the U.S. Constitution. Let's listen to her comments. People need work and we're not doing right by them by creating work. And I believe this uh, caucus will put us on the right path and we'll give President Obama a number of executive orders that he can sign uh, with pride and strength. In fact, I think that should be our number one agenda. Let's write up these executive orders, draft them, of course, and ask the president to stand with us on full employment. This is absolutely pathetic. Maybe I'm mistaken and correct me if I'm wrong, but shouldn't Congresswoman Lee's number one agenda be about her oath to uphold and defend the U.S. Constitution, which does not allow the president to legislate by executive order? Article 1, Section 1 of the U.S. Constitution makes clear that the lawmaking function is reserved to the legislative branch. If all legislative power rests in Congress, then it only stands to reason that none remains for the president. Zilch. Zero. Nada. The president has no authority for creating work outside of any law passed by Congress. It should stun all of us that Congresswoman Lee is now acting as an advisor to presidential legislation. But maybe not. After all, I am deeply concerned about her knowledge of our Constitution. Just listen to this. And frankly, maybe I should offer a good thanks to the distinguished members of the majority, uh, the Republicans, my chairman and others, for giving us an opportunity to have a deliberative constitutional discussion that reinforces the sanctity of this nation and how well it is that we have lasted some 400 years operating under a constitution that clearly defines what is constitutional and what is not. The Enforcement Act is not constitutional, but it gives us an opportunity to raise these issues. That's what freedom is. Uh, that's what the opportunity of democracy is all about. So the all right, I know this is a bit too easy, but let's get back to our pretended knowledge of our Constitution and executive orders. James Madison explained in Federalist Number 47 that our nation was founded upon the principle of separation of powers. He said, the accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judicial, in the same hands may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny. Let's compare that statement to the statements of then Senator Barack Obama as he talked about executive orders. There's been a tendency on the part of this administration to, to try to hide behind executive privilege every time there's something uh, a little shaky that's taking place. And I think you know, the administration would be best served by coming clean on this. It's not actually true that the Patriot Act was the worst. Most of the problems that we have had in civil liberties were not done through the Patriot Act. They were done through executive order by George W. Bush. And I think one of the biggest problems of the last eight years has been the degree to which President Bush has taken almost the opposite tack, that uh, secrecy and uh, concentrations of power in the Oval Office. I taught the Constitution for 10 years. I believe in the Constitution and I will obey the Constitution of the United States. We're not going to use signing statements as a way of doing an end run around Congress. All right. Again, that was Senator Obama. President Obama has taken a different path. In that 2014 State of the Union address, he repeatedly claimed the authority to legislate through executive order when Congress refuses to do what he desires. President Obama failed to cite any legal authority to issue any of his proposed mandates. Of course, Congress should be furious that the president is stealing their exclusive legislative role. And some members of Congress are. But Obama's policy of legislation by executive order has now found a champion in the person of Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. And that shouldn't just make Congress upset. It should outrage the people. Why? Because when power is vested in one man to rule, the risk is too great to us and to our liberties. Guard the Constitution and respect for the rule of law with everything you have. Why? Because as Daniel Webster said, if the American Constitution should fail, 
there will be anarchy throughout the world.